John, give him, a, give him an A. There's two aspects of the music commission. There's one, there's Michael Cicchino. Whatever, yes, we're just going to record some polka music and I hope it works. And there's also, you know, Lilo Schifrin's, his music that he designed. That theme song that I love, and I love the people's interpretation of that. First of all, the Lalo Schifrin theme is obviously, without a doubt, one of the greatest themes ever written. And so the joy of being able to use that theme in, in a huge, giant summer movie is one of the greatest gifts you could get. So the challenge was finding, okay, what point in the movie is that point where we want to use it? And the place that it ended up being the most appropriate was the Vatican scene, where it just builds, 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 builds until we get to the theme at the very end once they've, once they've captured Davian. What's up? That was also one of those things that you couldn't just play over and over and over. It's the greatest theme in the world, but you can't use it for 90 minutes of music as score. And you don't want to, because when you're telling a story, you want to save the peak of the story for a very specific time in the film. And, and it's the same with the music. We wanted to be able to just hammer away at that theme at the perfect time. The music is spectacular all the way through, what Michael has composed. It's gonna have that big movie sound. We had 112 players at the session. We were recording about 87 minutes of music, but the film is two hours long, so that's a lot of music. We'll start with the suite, just to help Dan get levels. Two, three, four, five, bar one. He's really a storyteller. He happens to be an incredible test for me in terms of story and, and rhythm and character and motivation. And it's why his music is so good, because he understands the internal life of the characters in order to properly compose the music to fit the scenes. I was most happy with the, when Ethan was back looking for a defibrillator, and it's this really crazy kind of Twilight Zone EQ where he's looking around for this thing. She doesn't exactly know what he's looking for, and it's after all of this action music, and yet we still we have one more, like, a reset. It's not over yet, and I think that was a really fun cue, just because of the rhythmic sensibility that it just keeps the movie driving at a point where you go, okay, we're done now, but it's not done now. Tom Cruise coming to your scoring session is both a blessing and a curse. It is the greatest thing because it's really fun to watch the orchestra. They love having him there because everyone is so pumped up and so exciting and having so much fun. It was amazing of him to come and spend as much time as he did with us. He was one of the greatest people you could work with in that sense because he also was always concerned about where are we within the story. You know, and JJ and I, that's been our core ever since I met JJ. Everything with he and I has both been always where are we within the story because that's, we, are, we will never deviate from that with what we're doing. Him with his writing and directing, me with the music. And Tom was very much the same way, he fell right into that. He would say to you, well, why would you do this musically? And I would explain, well, because within the story, this is happening. And he would be like, great, perfect. You know, where somebody else might be, well, I don't care. Let's just plow through that with some action music and get us to the next point. He was never like that because he actually does understand story and cares about it. Michael Giacchino has made moments that I think would be standard and make them extraordinary because he brings a, an emotional component to the score that is at least as important as anything else.